All right, I'm gonna walk you through Droids 4, reverse the pass, patch the file, get the flag, check out this file, you can find it here on the shell server. All right, so just like before, I've thrown this thing into JDX, and in the main activity, you'll see that it calls Flagstaff Hill get flag, just like we're used to. Here in Flagstaff Hill get flag, so it builds these strings, it sets these characters, it then concatenates this and asks, is it equal to this big concatenation? If so, it says return call it. And so I assume what they're, what they're hoping that we'll do here is basically do what we did in Droids 3, modify the APK to get it to call this cardamom with whatever this string is going to be. We're gonna do it differently here. We're gonna use a tool called Frida and we're actually going to inject code into the running APK just to do something a little different than we did last time. All right, so I'm, I'm a little too lazy to figure out all this ace, jack, king, queen stuff. So I'm just gonna copy that into uh, a Java program here. So we just copied all this code and instead of doing that test, I'm gonna return that big concatenation I've created a little main method that will just print it out. So I'm gonna be able to figure out what all of this corresponds to without reverse engineering it. All right, so we'll just say Java C, droid 4.java, and then Java droid 4. Uh, all right, and so that string comes out to be alphabet soup. So we'll just remember that for now the string is gonna be alphabet soup. Now I'm gonna run this in the emulator, and like I said, I'm gonna inject code into it using Frida. So in order to do that, here in Android Studio, I've created a new device, this Pixel 2 XL No Play, and I'm gonna choose one that doesn't have the Play Store because I'm gonna be able to root that device. So that's the one I have running here. So this is a Pixel 2 uh, running with no Play Store, so it's gonna be rootable. Here's the website for Frida. This is their Android tutorial. It talks us through installing Frida on the device. And so you'll see that I need ADB. So this XDA developers page told me how to install ADB. I downloaded the zip file and I've unzipped it into my downloads platform tools folder. From this releases folder for the Frida server, I picked the Frida server and actually I picked this x86 one because if you look at the details of my virtual device, the details of my virtual device is that it is an x86. So I'm gonna use that version of Frida. So I've downloaded a copy of Frida server, Android x86.xz. I've used 7-zip to unzip that as well. We can come back here to where we're installing it. Uh, so I think I would be here. So I'm in my downloads folder. And where did I put that? It was in platform tools. All right, so I can say, I'll just walk through the commands here, adb root. So I've already done that before. Then you do adb push and the name of the file, which was, let's see, Frida server, and I want this one. So that's the file. And then you push that to data local temp. And then we're going to change that file so it's executable. So 755 means everybody can read, write, and execute. Group can read and execute. World can read and execute. Um, all right, and it's not there. It's in data local temp. And then we're just going to run that. So on the phone, or the virtual phone, we're running a copy. 
And so this is telling me that I've actually already done that before. That's why it says that address already in use. So the Frida server is already running. And so then we'll be able to say ADDB devices-L. You can see that um, the Android SDK device is running, the emulator is attached. Okay, so installing the Frida on the client was just a matter of doing a pip install Frida tools. So over here, I have a command prompt and I've done pip install Frida tools. I'll show you what that looks like. And it's going to tell you that it's already been done. And then what we can say is Frida ps-u and we're going to see all the processes that are running on this virtual phone. Okay, in Android Studio, I told it that I wanted to debug 4.apk, and I can run that. That makes sure that it installs 4 onto this virtual phone, and there you can now see it's going to run this. I can type in the alphabet soup that I figured out, and it says call it, right? So I haven't actually called the method yet. All right, so now um, there's a nice tutorial here by Josh Spicer on how to use Frida to hack an ADB. And so I've modeled my code based on this example here. Uh, when I did that, the very first thing I got was an error right here when it tried to define this class. And it um, that error, you now Google took me over here so I got this error like identifier um, blah is undefined. And so the script is using a variable without declaring it first. So that used to be allowed in Frida, but now you have to declare the variables. So you'll see that in my JavaScript. So now I actually have this var and I declare the variable flagstaff before I use it. So that's what I modified from Josh Spicer's code. So I've got a real small script here. It's going to say finding the flag. It's going to print that to the log. It then uses com hello cmu pico ctf flag staff hill. So com hello cmu pico ctf flag staff hill is the name of the class. I'm going to change the implementation of the get flag method. So there is this get flag method here that does all this stuff. I'm not going to do that stuff. Instead, I am going to just call class flag staff cardamom with the input string. And then I'll print out the flag and I'll return the flag. Okay, so now uh, what we can do, we've got, we said our debugger is running. So we're going to say Frida dash u to connect across the USB to the phone. Then we're going to run for frida.js and we're going to do that on com hello cmu pico ctf as the executable. All right, so we'll see over here on the phone. It's restarting that application. And in here, I'm going to say percent resume. So it's now in our, in our code, it's finding the flag, it's overwritten the method for what happens when this button gets pressed. So we'll say our alphabet soup. Now when I push the button, it's gonna call my JavaScript code instead of doing what it does before. And so you'll see the flag is not particularly silly. I printed it out here because I'd have that return value. It printed it out here because I did the console log. And now I have my flag, so Pico CTF, not particularly silly. So that's another way of doing this. Uh, Frida seems to be a very powerful tool that allows you to inject code in the running program on the phone emulator rather than trying to recompile the APK.